Welcome to the Breakthrough Email Marketing Show. This is Big Jason. I'm discussing all things email based on over 20 years of proven results, not guesswork. Oh, sorry guys. What's up? Big Jason, Breakthrough Email Marketing Show. Today we're talking about Active Campaign and other email service providers. What's all the fuss about Active Campaign? Why are people almost coming to blows on Facebook talking about it? Should you even consider using it? Why, why not? We're gonna cover all that. If you are live right now and you wanna ask questions and chat in real time, join me and everybody else on my private Skype group for Breakthrough Email Marketing Show. Once you have Skype loaded, just type in the URL, breakthroughemailmarketing.com forward slash Skype, okay? This is not a 365, 24-7 chat group. It's only for the Breakthrough, Breakthrough Email Marketing Show. So as you know, Google has a delay. So again, chat real time, ask me questions all throughout the show. Or the next show, go to breakthroughemailmarketing.com forward slash Skype once you have Skype loaded. All right, cool. So again, anything I covered today, whether you're live or the replay, feel free to ask me questions. So let's go. I'm going to share my screen. Some of the stuff is going to be screenshots. Some of the stuff is going to be live. Um, you know, there's just some some things I can show you in my account. Some some things I can't because they're sensitive data. But I love questions. I want to answer all your questions. And if you want to follow along. In your own account, Active Campaign actually has a free option, no credit card required. Go to emailresponsewarrior.com forward slash AC. It's real easy to sign up and you can go through. They give you, you know, most of the features of paid accounts. You just have limit limited number of contacts. So emailresponsewarrior.com forward slash AC if you want to check it out. All right. Let me share my screen now. Can you guys let me know if you can hear me okay? If you can see the screen okay? All right, welcome Seamus, James, Zafar, everybody else. Again, many questions as you want about active campaign, about autoresponders in general. All right. So let's get going. So what's all the fuss about active campaign? You have some quote unquote experts on Facebook saying, you know, run away as fast as you can. I used to be one of those and to actually investigate it for myself, both on the phone, chat, and on Skype with active campaign uh, people. Then you have other people saying it's the best thing since sliced carrots. So what's the truth? What's fact? What's fiction? All right, just want to remind everybody, uh, you may not share this information with anyone. This includes your mastermind group, friends, JV partners, or anyone else, whether online or offline, especially Facebook. Um, I don't mind you sharing the replay. That's fine. Um, I do like rave reviews when they're blind. So something like this where Bon Halbert, Gary Halbert's son, said, uh, every email, quote, unquote, guru I know warned against using one simple tactic, which increased my click-through rate by 400%. Only Jason said such a tactic would work. So it's pretty impressive rave review, but it doesn't actually give away the actual secret. All right, so what are you gonna discover today? So who should or should not consider using Active Campaign? Why Active Campaign allegedly hates your guts and hopes you burn in, burns in hell? Um, how Active Campaign will provide your email marketing with manna from heaven? And what I personally love and despise about active campaign for myself and my clients. So we're trying to be fair and balanced here like Fox, quote unquote, like Fox. Um, answers to any and all questions about active campaign or any other autoresponder service known a man, woman, or rabbit. Welcome to everybody else joining us live 
on the private Breakthrough Email Marketing Show Skype group. That's where you can chat in real time versus the Google Hangout delay. So go to BreakthroughEmailMarketing.com forward slash Skype. That way I can see your questions faster. Arn Fiend says the screen and sound is perfect. Thank you. James, sounds good. Thanks. All right, Mark. Mark says it's great. Arn Fiend's from Norway. Welcome again, Arn Fiend. Mark, Wintry, UK. Sorry to hear that, man, but uh, yeah, looking forward to sharing. Seamus is calling from Del Mar, California. How's it going, Seamus? All right, let's continue. So who should consider using active campaign? Who's the ideal email marketer? What type of business? So any bunny, any email marketer whose product is focused on their own product versus affiliate marketing. So if you're in uh, paid traffic and CPA offers, ClickBank, ClickSure, ugh, ClickSure offers, then active campaign is probably not for you. But we'll talk about that more in a bit. But let's focus on those product owners. So say so you have a flagship product, even if it's just one, and once they purchase, you set expectations. You know, you just don't just start blindly mailing offers. You're building a relationship, and once in a while, you're rec making a recommendation. You're still providing value in your emails, and then you're saying, "Hey, by the way, for more information on you know yada yada yada, check this out." Um, a fail-safe way is to provide value and provide a link for a video review, a blog post. Myself personally, I've actually promoted within the email and not given away too much value. It's not like, I think what the problem is, is just people signing up to your list and just saying, hey, check this out, hey, check this out, hey, check this out, stuff like that. All right, well, we'll talk about that more in a second. So again, does that make sense? If you're product focused, not affiliate focused, then you're a candidate to use Active Campaign. I'm gonna go sp into specifics why and what features are available versus others and all that good stuff. But that's the main thing. If you're product focused, you're pretty much good to go. All right. So who shouldn't consider using active campaign and why they want you to burn in hell? So I think this is pretty much obvious to most people. Most people, you know, spammers, WSO whores, MLM, BizOp, yada, yada, yada. If you go to emailresponsewarrior.com forward slash AC, they have terms and conditions. They list specifically who, do they, who they don't like. And I just talked about what's seems to be acceptable and what I've experienced is acceptable. I know Andre Chaperone recommends and uses it in some of his businesses. Um, so this is just basically the basic. So you, you do a WSO, a $7, $17 WSO, and then you start blasting people. It's probably not for you, like I was saying before. So it's pretty obvious. Um, who they like and who they don't like. I think the problem comes is that they have just seen so many scammers, spammers and whores come to them. They don't want any part of it. So they've made these broad sweeping statements just trying to scare people away because they don't want crap on their service. They don't want the deliverability for any of their clients affected by these type of people, these type of email marketers. So that's the thing. And my experience was I talked to people on the phone and chat and I got all kinds of conflicting advice, but, and I gave them examples and they're like, nope, you're not good. But then finally I talked to someone who explained to me is like, no, actually what you explained is probably going to be okay. If it's not, we'll actually talk to you. We're not just going to shut you down. If you get like 500 spam complaints, yeah, they'll probably shut you down. They should shut you down. Um, but again, 
is explained to me they just do not want anything to do with people like this. And I don't blame them. Um, they could probably do a little better job of explaining this and giving concrete examples of what's good and what's not good, according to them. And it's, and it's their right. And this is what someone specifically told me over Skype from Active Campaign. They actually shut down over one million dollars worth of business just last year because they hate spammers so much. So it's not so much product owners and legit marketers promoting other products, it's piece of crap spammers that are the problem. And again, they're not a-holes like Confusionsoft or AWeber where they're just gonna shut you down right away. They're gonna be like, hey, you know, what you're doing, it's not acceptable, it's against our terms, or we actually, you know, don't approve of that type of thing and they'll work with you, okay? But just know, they are dead serious of keeping crap out. So, you can promote affiliate products. Again, it shouldn't just be your main focus. And which is a good thing no matter where you are. Even if you're strictly an affiliate marketer, you should strive to have a really good relationship because you're going to make more money from affiliate marketing. It's just to do it on AC, you've got to do it a certain way. You can't just be pitch, 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 and the whole email is just about the pitch. All right. So how Active Campaign will provide your email marketing with manna from heaven. So by providing you and your business the most affordable yet powerful email marketing solution to help put you in the best possible position to get the right message to the right person at the right time, which is what email marketing is all about. I've been doing this for over 18 years. I've used practically every solution known to man, woman, or rabbit. Um, I see this all the time. People are like, yeah, I've used all the top service providers and this one's the best. And who do they list? They go, yeah, I've used AWeber, get response, and eye contact. That's, those are all bottom tier providers. AWeber, eye contact, get response, they're low tier. They're on the bottom of the barrel. Mid tier is like MailChimp, Active Campaign, things like that, Infusionsoft, OAP. And then you got high tier, which is what counts. Exact Target, Lyris, and every solution has its advantages and disadvantages. No one's perfect, but the bottom tier, quote unquote, might be easier to use in some cases, but they're just lacking in so many features. Money-making features, we're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, depending on the size of your list and your market, that you're leaving on the table because you're not doing certain things because you just don't have, have those capabilities. All right. Seamus, yep, that definitely sounds like that's a good possibility. All right, so a recent case study when I moved my biggest client to active campaign, and again, they screwed up and had a bunch of people from their other, actually from their CRM that wasn't synced properly with their old service provider, Constant Contact, which sucks by the way. So a bunch of people that are unsubscribed from Constant Contact weren't synced with the CRM, so this, they gave me the CRM list, uploaded a lot of spam complaints. Not out of this world, but it raised a red flag. All they did was like, hey, what's up? I said, our bad. I've taken care of it. I've uploaded the unsubscribe export from Constant Contact, removed everybody. I've talked to them, put things in place. Boom, green light, no problems. But with the capabilities and features available in an active campaign out of the box that are not available in constant contact or you have to pay out the yin yang for them 
first email at the gate, or actually first couple emails, massive increase in both opens, clicks, and leads. Not every email is about a sale. Sometimes it's about a lead. Sometimes it's about a call to action. And I first showed you a screenshot of Google Analytics showing how much revenue a money an email produced. And then here's a, also another screenshot where they were typically seeing about 100 leads per email. That is four emails with active campaign. So that's over a thousand. That's based on the marketing capabilities that I had available to me that I didn't have with constant contact. All right, so what do I personally love about Active Campaign? I'm gonna go through some bullet items and then I'm actually gonna switch screens and go to Active Campaign. All right, so the ability to choose freestyle HTML plain text emails. You wouldn't believe this, but sometimes that's really hard to do with some services because they want to put you in a box and do things their way. With Active Campaign, you got multiple choices. So you can do freestyle, you can upload your HTML, say you like to do your emails in Dreamweaver like me, you can do that. They have templates, they have built in, you can create their own. I'm gonna cover those in a little bit in more detail. And yes, you can send plain text only emails. Now you might be like, what, what the hell do you mean, Jason? <laughs> Everyone is, lets you send plain text only emails. Not true, not true. I actually left OAP, also known as Entreport, because they don't allow that. Stupid, idiotic. They actually let you split test auto automated sequences, but they don't let you send plain text only emails. So would I never recommend Office Autopilot? No, it's not true. I might in some cases. Probably less likely now that Active Campaign is here. But yeah, that's one of the autoresponder services that doesn't even let you send plain text only emails anymore. Um, more than A-B split testing. So rather, some people only let you split test two variations. This one lets you, lets you split more. Uh, link naming for reports. You would not believe how complicated and what a pain it is even with top tier providers. And some of them don't even allow this. So let's say you have your st standard link, uh, Facebook link, um, your main call to action, or if you're deceived into thinking three links is the magical number of links you should have, you can actually when you, you're preparing the send, actually name them. So rather than looking at this complicated link and all these variables in the URL, boom. If you feel like you have to have a logo, you could say logo, a main call to action, um, a video preview image, stuff like that makes it way easier to figure out what's driving the response and what people are interacting with in your emails. This is another big one. This is one of the reasons why I hated campaign monitors. It was pretty good, it's better than Aweber, but when you s select a custom field, when you create it, you couldn't apply it to other lists. So say if you collected city or state and then they s just signed up to another list, you don't have the city and state for that new list. You'd have to collect it all over again, stupid. But Active Campaign lets you assign it to all lists. So, like first name, obviously, it's by default all lists. But talking about custom fields, say, let's say you wanted to know if, let's say if I wanted to know if you signed up for a list about Active Campaign. So, what if I had a hidden custom field in the sign up form that said Active Campaign Show? And I put the default value as yes. So if you signed up, automatically goes into your account, but I wanna know that regardless of what list you're on, that's available. Or if I only want to know that specific 
field for two lists or three lists, whatever, you can do that. So very cool. I actually put what I hate about Active Campaign once on here. It should be on what I hate about Active Campaign. So I'm going to talk about the gobs and gobs of CSS later. Um, ability to segment when creating emails, viewing contacts, or dynamically in automations. I'm going to I'm going to go there. I'm going to cover that. Don't worry about that if you don't understand what that means. But other people like eye contact which is okay. They used to be really good, but now they're just like, okay. Um, I don't recommend them anymore. But so when you're creating the email, you can actually choose an existing segment or you can create one right then and there. You can say, I only want to send to these people. If they've done this, have, haven't done that. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to show you how to do that in a bit. Um, you can go to your contact list, Search for everybody that clicked on a certain link or is has you know the active campaign show the value equals yes, I want to target all of them. Then you can create a segment based on that. Okay, that's all manual. Some people have that, but here's what's really cool: what only the typically only the top tier providers have. You can dynamically do that. So you can set up an automation so that every person that comes in, if they have a certain field, if they're from a certain state, if they do a certain action, it could just be automatically without you doing ever doing anything, tagging them, segmenting them, doing all kinds of stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. And again, it's not as hard. Like I said, I've used lots of top tier providers, providers that have amazing features but require a engineering degree to use like I've actually told a client before just last year you know what you're gonna have to pay me minimum 2,500 bucks more a month if you want me to do that stuff I I want to write the emails I'll even put the emails in the system but I I'm not gonna set up all this Jedi crap because it's just too difficult you don't want to pay me for doing all this manual crap it's too hard um, but that's what I love about Active Campaign. It makes it easy. And yes, I know <laughs> me saying it's easy doesn't mean it's easy for you because you're not at my level. You maybe haven't been doing it as long. You haven't seen as much. But still, relative to the top tier providers, I think it's easy for everyone. And anything you can't figure out, I mean, they have videos. They have webinars that you can watch, that you can give to your outsourcers. But they also have live chat that you can ask questions and they've been super helpful. I actually forgot to put that on there, but their live chat is amazing. They get helped all the time. But wait, there's more. What's up, Kenny? All right, so automations, like I was saying, are out of this world. Um, easier than any other autoresponder service in the history of the internet, from my experience, to set up. Um, these are, I'm going to show you in a second, but it's basically all these um, kind of like a flow chart. Okay, so they subscribe to the lists. Where'd they come from? Did they fill out this field? Did they fill out a survey? Did they click? Did they open? Okay, let's do this. Let's wait 24 hours to see what happens if they do this, do that. No? Okay, let's do that. And again, that might say, oh, but it's not. Once you get the hang of it, it's insane. Um, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with getdrip.com, Kenny. Oh, this is killer. Social and demographic data comes with your account, whether it's plus or higher. And plus, I think, starts at 49 bucks. So they're going to tell you if they're male or female. If they use the email that's associated with their social accounts, they're going to tell you all their social accounts. They're going to tell you their age, their name, all that awesome stuff that you can use to segment and laser target, like I'm saying in the next bullet. Targeting can be laser focused in umpteen different ways, again, both manually or dynamically, which is awesome. Um, 
So I can target everyone with a Facebook account, LinkedIn. I could target everyone that doesn't have a Facebook account or LinkedIn and target them. Say, hey, you know, uh, I'm not sure what your LinkedIn account, but uh, let's connect there or Facebook. And you guys, if you're on my list already, you've actually experienced this next feature, which is insane. And I'm going to show you some examples, some even crazier examples. And I know like Seamus and some other advanced guys are just going to, it's going to blow their mind. You can actually do conditional statements in the from name, the subject line, and in the content. So rather, and sometimes it's, Depending on what you're going to do, it's going to be actually easier to create different emails for different segments. But in some cases where you just want to customize certain things, maybe you want to change one word that you think it's going to matter to based on whether they said yes or no to something. So you can change one word in the subject line. That's simple. But you can actually change your opening paragraph. You can change your call to action. The reason why your value proposition in the call to action, you can change the image based on any anything you can think of, you can change it based on that. And you can do it multiple. So you can do if they live in California, say this. If they live in New York, say this. If they live in Spain, say this. And if they don't live anywhere like if I don't know where they live, then by default, just say this. That's more complicated doesn't have to be and i'm going to show you some examples it's insane what you can do so today rather than sending an email to everyone that subscribed or registered for the webinar and saying hey guys just want to let you know if you want to follow along in your own account they have uh, active campaign as a free account so sign up blah 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 and then follow up with people who had who hadn't registered yet Say, hey guys, today's gonna be awesome, blah, 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 and you can do all this crazy stuff, or I'm gonna go over this and that. I basically sent one email to everybody. And the opening of the email, I said, I said, sup, Seamus. A little bunny told me you haven't registered. Uh, well, actually, Seamus did register, so I'll use, so, uh, sup, Seamus. A little bunny told me you registered for today. Perfect. And then I went into a reason why what today was so important. I told him about uh, the free account, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I told the people who hadn't registered about the free AC account because I wanted to give them uh, an incentive like, you know, hey, active campaign, you can try it out for free. You can take it for a test drive. It'll help you on today, whether it's live or recorded. And then down the email, actually, I think I can show it to you later. But um, I actually said, I told people like Seamus, I told them about this private Skype group. I, but dynamically, it changed if they hadn't registered and told them a couple of reasons why they needed to sign up and why it's so important to attend live. And I gave them a link to register again versus I told Seamus something different. And like I said, in some cases, depending on how big your list is, if you outsource and you have something to do it all, it might be easier to just, if the messages are so different, it might be easier to just write the email, copy it, change some things. But in this case, it was super easy, saved me a lot of time, perfect. And again, I'm going to go into AC, so hang tight. So let me tell you what I personally despise about Active Campaign. I don't use the word despise lightly, but Active. One of the things that I do love about Active Campaign is that they take feedback. They're the exact opposite of a Weber, who are a holes. And I'm talking about from years and years ago. They just think. They're so awesome. They know everything. And what you, Marketing Sherpa, or what data says doesn't matter. Not active campaign. They actively want, like sometimes I haven't, haven't even needed to fill out a form and give feedback. They're just like, wow, you're right. We really should have that. You know what? I'm going to mention that in today's meeting. Thank you so much. 
I get that all the time. And other things that are just little, maybe it's personal to me, maybe it's just based on my experience, I think it would be good. I just fill out a form. Either way, it's awesome to work with someone that's actually interested in feedback and making the best service possible. All right, again, what I personally despise about Active Campaign, nobody's perfect. But again, they're always looking to improve things. All right. The templates are terrible. They're the worst templates I've ever seen. I'm going to show you why that is. But again, they have multiple ways for you to write emails, so it's not a deal breaker for me. It shouldn't be a deal breaker for you. Um, and I've told them that, and I think in December, they're rolling out the new templates. Brian Johnson, welcome to the private Skype group. If you're just joining us, uh, breakthroughemailmarketing.com forward slash Skype. If you want to chat and ask questions in real time, make sure you have Skype loaded. So yeah, templates are terrible. Whether you create your own template, you can create your own templates, uh, or the default templates, they're terrible. Okay, But again, it's not a reason for you not to use Active Campaign. All right, uh, the split test reporting, it's not automated. So they, you have your normal reporting for each campaign, then you do a split test. Um, it just it shows you the overall data. And you actually, basically, within the split, the campaign, you have to manually go from this subject line to the other subject line. Um, so you have to manually see which one had more opens or which one had more clicks or whatever. So do not like that, and I've told them, and uh, they agreed that it should be more e easier to see, you know, which variation is winning and all that good stuff. How was I able to tell who signed up and who didn't? Well, that's the awesome thing about Active Campaign. I actually forgot again. Um, there's so many things I love about it, you know, just no time in the day to write them all down. With all their accounts, even the lower plus accounts for like 49 bucks, you have site um, site event tracking. You have site tracking and, and event tracking. So they give you code on your website that you can actually segment and search and tell if they've been to a page. So if they've been to your thank you page, from the registration form, they signed up. Sweet. And then you also have event tracking. So I have an event tracking code called Breakthrough Email Marketing Show Registration. And then I have a description that I can change. So I can, today I called it, or this whole week I've been calling it Active Campaign Show. And then my next show is going to be with one of the top copywriters for Agora, um, Mike Morgan and the description is going to be Mike Morgan. So based on the event, so you can, uh, you can tell by if they hit the thank you page, they can tell if an event occurred. And I'm going to show you where all that is listed in the contact. It's insane. And then also you can tell, again, by manually or dynamically uh, seeing if they clicked on a link. So I used a one-click registration link. So if they clicked, they're registered. And it automatically adds the tag that, you know, active campaign show, yes. So a lot of different ways. So you got the, let's review that. So you, did they click the link? If it's a one-click register, you know they're registered. Um, did they hit the thank you page? The only way to get to the thank you page is if they're registered. Okay, if they hit the thank you page, they're registered. Um, the event, so on any conversion goal page, whether it's an opt-in thank you page, a sale thank you page, you can register an event. So again, site tracking just, it gives you the name or the URL of every place they be, every place they've been, you can go on that. And then you can be more descriptive with events, like opt-in, sale, sale for what, so lots of different ways you can tell. Hope, hopefully that answers your question.
And again, we're going to go live to Active Campaign and check some more stuff out so you can see it. Okay. So custom field types, they can't be changed once created. So I love the fact that you can create unlimited custom fields. That's another thing I forgot to say. Unlimited, like co eye contact is extremely limited. It's like 10 or 15, and then it's like, up. Oh, you got to upgrade your account. Not with active campaign. So unlimited custom fields is great. You can assign them to all lists or selected lists, unlike campaign monitor, which doesn't make any custom field data available to all lists. But the problem is, is that if you change your mind that, no, it shouldn't be a drop down field, I just want a text field, you can't change it, you have to delete it and do it all over again. But that's now that you know that, once you create your account, you really need to think, okay, what kind of data do I want to collect, whether it is on the opt-in, whether after they order, if I'm going to do a survey through AC, which questions and what type of field should I create? And then once you get started, then you can make your changes there. But so it lessens the problem if you really think through and you get it right the first time. Otherwise, you'll have to delete it. But it's not that big a deal. And I've already reported, and they said they're going to be working on their custom fields to address that. So, boom. All right, here's a question from Brian and Seamus. So, hey, Jason, I'm currently running three different businesses. Is there a way to segment each business customers and manage under one account, or do I need three different accounts? Not a problem. I'm doing it myself. I have multiple businesses, one account. So you have lists. You can each have each business on their own list or multiple lists for each business. And then you can also do tagging. I forgot to mention that. It's another amazing thing. You can actually tag people as well with Active Campaign. So say you have someone on your customer list, but are they a raving fan? Are they multiple purchases? Yada, yada, yada. You can tag them based on that. So you can target you know, the raving fans versus the uh, front end product versus you know, the upsell buyers, all that good stuff. So a lot of different ways you can do it. So yeah, no problem whatsoever having them all on the same account. The only problem though is, is do you have a volatile business. So you probably wouldn't want to put a volatile business with, say, two uh, info product businesses that are, you know, tame. But again, if it's really volatile, do you really want it on active campaign anyways? So you're probably not going to run into that. So, and if it's volatile, then you probably won't last on AC anyways, say like dating or supplements. Supplements, I think you can get away depending on what it is. If it's Cambodia and green bean coffee extract, probably not. Let me know if that answers your question. Wait. Okay. Here's what I was talking about before I actually copy this to the what I love on accident. Um, the contact forms, when you create it, you can't select just the form. Like say you want to integrate with Webinar Jam, and they say specifically don't include the CSS or JavaScript. It's like this massive, massive gob of crap. I don't like it, but it's not that hard to copy it all to you know TextPad on my Mac and remove all that and just copy and paste. Or if I want one specific custom field, it's not that big a deal, but it is, I think it's a pain in the ass personally. And I've told him that. Um, another thing is when designing a form, you don't have the custom field available to include in the form. You can manually do it if you know the custom field code, but if, 
when you create the custom field, and I'll show you later if you want, if you create the custom field and you mark it don't show the contact, say like on the preferences center, um, it won't be visible for you to add to a form that you're creating. You can create as multiple opt-in forms as you want. So that's a pain in the ass. So a couple of my forms I've actually had to, and this is something you can change once you create a custom field. I've gone in and say, yes, visible to contacts, uh, to a couple fields, created a form, got the code, and then I went back and said, you know, hide from contacts. Um, they do have the other options if the field is hidden. The only problem though is hidden custom fields are always by default um, just text fields, no drop downs or anything like that. But again, they know about it. And I told them, I said, I've never seen any email service provider do that. Say you have to show the contacts, the form, or it's not going to be available in the form builder. It's retarded. So, and they're doing something about it. So it's bad, but again, another good point for active campaign. All right, here's one more. So I'm going to show you how the automations work. But if you have an automated campaign set up and you're like, okay, if this something something happens here, I want to send an email. You can't dynamically change the from name or reply to email. And this might not apply to you, but for my biggest client, they sell discount business and first class tickets. In some cases, they want the emails to come from the personal, the sales rep that's assigned to them. Some they want to come from the company. So if it's an email created in a automated campaign, you can't dynamically change the from name or reply to email. You can change the content of the email. You can change the subject of the email. So you could say, you know, blank custom field is trying to reach you, something like that. And you can do that within the content, but the alternative is to use the API in certain sections of the automated campaign to create the email. Then you can dynamically change the from name and reply to email. Again, this is for more advanced people. If this is just, if your eyes are glazing over, don't worry about it. It's probably not going to be a big deal for a lot of people. Um, Kenny, I think you came in late. That's okay. You can watch the replay, but I'll just tell you real quick. Yeah, I covered that. And for the guitar niche, I again, this is just my opinion. You're going to have to find out. And it's a good thing they have a free trial so you can take for a test drive. But And again, if you did something and they didn't like it, they would just say, hey, you know, you need to change how you're doing things. They wouldn't just kick you out. But the guitar niche, no. If you're teaching them about playing guitar, you're selling guitar info products. Um, I don't, I wouldn't see a huge problem with you doing JV promos as long as you're not just all of a sudden saying, um, yo, you gotta check out this killer riff tutorial, blah, blah, blah. Go get it. You know, if you, did a little story about how important it is to blah, blah, blah. When you're first starting to learn to riff, again, I'm speaking out my ass. I'm not Carlton or like most copywriters who play instruments, but um, something like that. And then he said for, you know, if you really want to learn how to riff, even if you can't play a tune <laughs> to save your life, uh, click the link below, you know. So, again, you wouldn't have to be super long, but just some value and then promote it. I, I wouldn't think that would be a problem. Um, Seamus asks, it is, so is, so is it a huge pain in the ass, PETA, to create a form and add it to WordPress site because of all the CSS code crap? No. So again, you would just copy and paste it into text pad or notepad or whatever and just copy the form if that's all you wanted. But they also have a WordPress plugin. 
that makes it easy. So that takes care of that. And I think I mentioned this, but uh, custom field types, they can't change once created. I can see how that might be problematic if someone's actually filled out, it has data and you change it from a drop down um, to a text field, but I still want the option. I've already experienced this like, dang it. And I have to delete it and recreate it. So I already told them, they said that was a good idea. Um, they're actually working on redoing the custom field. So they're gonna be uh, making things better. Again, this could just be personal to me. I'm just trying to be transparent and let you know that it's not, you know, all roses, but for the most part it is. And then link link naming. So if you want to create a new campaign from an existing template, if you actually want to use the templates, I, I would wait, hold off on using the templates for now, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Um, but like I said, the cool thing about having links, especially more than one link, is you can actually name it. So when you're checking out the reports on how it did, it's really easy to see which part of the email um, did what. So you could say image link, video preview link, um, text call to action, logo, whatever. But if you create a new campaign based on an existing campaign that had link naming in it, it doesn't keep the link names. So say if I basically saying the same thing and just changing a few things for, you know, my weekly podcast show that you're on right now. And I want to just keep you, you creating new emails based on previous emails that I did. I have to create the link names over and over and over again for each one. And I told them that they're like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. It would be, you know, we keep the same subject line and the same content, so you can just change a little bit of, about it. So there's really no, we should definitely save the link names as well if you're going to be using the same type of links. So again, I despise that I have to recreate the link names, even if I create a new campaign from a pre-existing campaign, but I love that they actually take my feedback and they're like, yeah, you're right. And if you've been asking questions in the webinar jam hangout chat box, um, I will get to those. But again, there's a del delay, so I don't, I don't even see them in real time. So that's why breakthroughemailmarketing.com forward slash Skype, once you have Skype loaded, is the way to go. All right, so before I go live to Active Campaign, I just want to tell you about Active Campaign bonus. So if you upgrade to a plus or higher account, and I'm gonna go through the different types of accounts in a second. Um, I'm gonna give you my ultimate deliverability email funnel. Um, it's gonna be specific for active campaign, but you can use it if you can get the technology right with any email service. But since it's an active campaign bonus, it's gonna be specific to active campaign. You're gonna get the exact emails I use for myself and for clients. You're gonna get a live hangout private walkthrough, at least one, probably more, uh, based on additional questions. And you're gonna get detailed step-by-step -step instructions, you know, step one, blah, 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 screenshot, step two, blah, 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 screenshot. Um, so I'm gonna make it as easy as possible. Um, this is this ultimate deliverability email funnel has been uh, approved or like, yeah, that's the way to go by two different top email service providers and my friend from Return Path. He's worked specifically in privacy and deliverability for over 17 years. He's worked with some of the biggest uh, names in email services forever. And the two email service providers that I asked about, um, what do you think about doing this for this client? Were like blown away. They're like, am I? And I've said, is like, is anybody else doing this? They're like, no, you're the first client to ever um, do this. That's insane. Yeah, I would, I would definitely do it. And these are the heads of deliverability. Um, would I 
let me finish this and let me get to that question. Seamus. So here's a little preview. So, and I'll show you in a second. You can just see it, but it's the ultimate deliverability funnel. You can start to see that I've got the steps right here. And here's a little preview of, you know, it's laid out. So again, it's like an easy to do plus um, flow chart. Plus, okay, this happens, do that, do this, do that. It's uh, going to be a lot easier than, you know, you might think it if you've never done an automated campaign before. Um, so before we do the Q&A about any autoresponder, let us go live to active campaign. And again, that's emailresponsewarrior.com forward slash AC. Again, you can take it for a test drive. If you upgrade to a plus or higher account, um, you'll get my ultimate deliverability email funnel. The exact emails I use myself and for clients, live hangout, private, just for you guys, walk through at least one, maybe more, and then detailed step-by-step -step instructions to set up this funnel. And just by doing this funnel, you'll have a massive increase in deliverability. You have a better relationship with your list. You'll make more money. And you're going to get custom walkthrough training on doing, you know, automations with active campaigns. So you're going to be head of the game. All right. I am going to switch to active campaign now. And then I'm going to answer Seamus's question. I'm back. All right, let's do this. All right. So before I go into that, Seamus wanted to know, any reason I might still recommend OAP for an info publisher? This sounds as good, but b better in many ways. Um. Active campaign does have a CRM. I think the OAP CRM is more has more features. The active campaign integrates with a gazillion different CRMs. So if you had your own or Salesforce or anything like that, no problem. And they have this built-in basic CRM. So you'd have to check it out and see. But uh, you know, depending on what you need. Yeah, active campaign is the way to go. If you're really into split testing the automated sequences, by default, like out of the box, then OAP would be the best. But if you want to split test a single campaign, it's easier an active campaign than OAP. OAP, you have to fire off a automated split test and you can do it but it's retarded it's like why would you give someone the ability to split test autoresponder sequences but make it so damn hard to split test a single campaign stupid so active campaign it's way easier to do a split test of a single campaign but doesn't have the out of the box feature to split test automations or autoresponder sequences but as but you can do that on the opt-in page. So you can have two automations and dynamically split test the opt-in form 50-50 so that, you know, for every two, one is going to go to auto automation sequence ones, the other guy is going to go to automation sequence two. All right. So I can see that you guys can see my screen. This is the awesome power of conditionals in your email. And I'm going to show you. Wait, let me see. Uh, hopefully, I'm not loading a screen with people's data. Nope. No. Ah, here we go. So here's my contact records, which I don't care if you guys see this. I don't care if you email me. So this is pretty damn cool. So this is my profile pic that I have associated with this email, jmhonline at gmail.com. Uh, it's got my city and state, Las Vegas, Nevada, US. It's got the time I first joined. It's got links to my Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
uh, Flickr, YouTube, and then you can personally email them outside of a campaign. So if you just wanted to contact them, like your salesperson, or if you know they're a raving fan, you could actually personally email them through the CRM without going through the trouble of creating a campaign. So that's pretty cool. And you can add notes, and it tells you if they're in any automations. And here's this pretty cool stuff. So age, 35 to 44, gender male, name Jason Henderson, badass. So you can segment based on male or female. Uh, here's the tags. So I've got, I'm active. Uh, I'm in the breakthrough email marketing list. I'm in the email response warrior gold. Shows all the lists. Here's all of my activity. Here's site and event tracking. Shazam. It tells me all the links I've clicked, the pages I've visited. Complete history. I'm not going to get into deals. That's something you can explore, but that's also a pretty damn cool feature. My uh, client that does the business of first class discounted tickets is going to be using that. There's notes. Again, here's my activities, all the emails I've been sent, what I've done with them, open, clicked, all that good stuff. So pretty, pretty awesome. So I'm a male. So all you have to do is copy and paste this into your email, put in the content you want to show women versus men, or you don't know if they're male or female. So you can put something generic here and something specific to women. And you, that could just be one word if you wanted to, or it could be a paragraph. It's up to you. Now you're saying, well, what if I want to say something for women? I want to say something for men. And then I want to say something generic for if I don't know if they're a man or a woman. Because maybe you're not asking them in a survey if they're male or female. And maybe the email they signed up with is not connected to any social accounts. So you, uh, AC hasn't told you whether they're male or female. Okay. What's this? Multiple conditions? All right. Here you go. Copy and paste. Change everything in here. See? If the gender is female, hi, ma'am, this is a message for you. Else if gender equals male, hi, sir, a message just for you. Otherwise, if they're not male or female, this is your message. And this is just copy and paste from their documentation. They actually have drop downs within creating a campaign or an automation that makes it a lot easier. So don't worry about that. Only thing you have to worry about is not messing up any of the percent signs or anything. But that's really badass feature. I'm actually going to load Dreamweaver so you can see that, how I did it. I'm loading it right now. All right, Let's see if I can make this bigger. All right, so sup, first name. And if I wanted to, you can have a default value for first name. So I could have the default value be email marketer. Or I can put a conditional here, you know. You can do conditionals, you know, if first name exists, put their first name. If not, put something custom, say for like every email. So if you're always using first name, you notice how I'm not saying dear first name, hi first name. I'm mixing it up a little bit, being a little more conversational. That's how I talk. Um, you could do that. So here is the conditional that I put in for today's email. So if active campaign show 
is yes. And again, they have a drop down for this. So don't be like, oh, I can't remember all that. You don't need to remember it. All right. So if active campaign show, it's a custom field, is yes. I say, a little bunny told me you registered for today's Hangout on Active Campaign. Drops down the line, perfect. Otherwise, a little bunny told me you haven't registered for today's Hangout. Done. Now all this stuff, it doesn't matter if they're registered or not, it's still really good information. Either it's gonna help get people who haven't registered on the show, or it's going to help get people who have registered to get on the show live. Again, depending on your situation, you can customize more, customize less. Again, see, if, the, if they registered, here's why it'll benefit you and your business to attend live. Otherwise, I wanna say, if you haven't registered, I'd highly recommend it. So if you're registered, I'm saying click here to join, my private Skype group, make sure you have Skype loaded first. If you haven't registered, the response to your email marketing would highly recommend it. And that goes with the sentence above here. Remember, we're going live, blah, 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 my Hangout service, blah, 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 we'll be reminding you with your attendance link. Again, that's something good to tell people who registered and those who haven't. So this is a multi-purpose email in one. Um, and then lastly, if they've registered, okay, so my Hangout service webinar jam will, will be reminding you with your attendance link, I've told them the time. If they've registered, I'm saying, okay. Uh, otherwise, click here to register and make it happen. So if they haven't registered, that's what they're gonna see. So pretty badass. There's a gazillion different ways you can use that. One of the many awesome things of Active Campaign. Again, depending on your situation, it actually might be easier to create separate emails, but in some cases, it's gonna be pretty awesome to do, just use one email. All right, let me switch back to Active Campaign. All right, so that's conditionals, pretty awesome. Brian, good stuff. Remember, email response warrior.com forward slash AC. If you already had a free account and you haven't upgraded, then if you want the bonus, I what I would do is contact them and says, you know, hey, I'm upgrading to a paid account because your your partner, Jason Henderson, jmhonline at gmail.com, said I should. He reviewed your service. Um, can you give him credit? And as long as they give me credit, then you're good. But uh, yeah, Brian, um, yeah, you're the second person to mention Get Drip, so I will check that out. So yeah, if you want to uh, offline, just share me what the other business is about. You know, that's a decision uh, uh, possibly I can help you make um, if you want to include that with your active campaign, because that would suck if you had two accounts that had no problems whatsoever um, on AC, and then the other account you got your whole account paused. Again, they're just going to pause you and say, "Hey, what's up? What's going on? That's not cool." Um, and I'll just save you time from having to set all that up and then move because it's a little too volatile. All right. So again, there's the contact view. All right. So if you're wondering about what it all does, all right. So again, my bonus is for if you do plus or enterprise and the plus, the lowest plus account's only 49 bucks, so it's not that much. So this is what you get. That's all the basic stuff. You get the marketing automation, the automation sequences. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Um, again, you get the built-in CRM. 
you get lead scoring. That's what OAP does. We can actually do that in Active Campaign as well. And still send plain, plain text emails, which you can't in OAP. What the hell? All right. So you got the drag and drop email designer. Not the best, but they're going to improve that. You really don't need it. Um, free email templates, same thing. Um, you can import existing contacts without double opt-in, which is really good. And whoever tells you that, oh, if an email service provider doesn't require double opt-in, that means they don't know anything or they don't care about deliverability. I wouldn't use them. Tell them to piss off. They're probably an affiliate for AWeber, one of the worst email service providers in the world. You know, Active Campaign is not stupid. They're gonna t they're gonna know if you import crap. They're gonna ask you where you got them, and they're gonna make you testify that you have not uh, stolen uh, these leads or done anything shady. Okay. Autoresponders, blah, 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 the geo tracking and the social media, the gender, all that good stuff. You're going to get the segments and the conditional content, unlimited sending. So once you get a at least a plus account, you have unlimited sending. So there's no, oh, you can only send 100,000, which is pretty badass. They actually have subscribe by SMS. You can actually in your automation – automation campaign, where they are in the campaign, you can actually send them an SMS. Bad ass. You get you get a default amount per month, and I think if you go over that, it's just it's really it's like cents per cent. So if that if that matters in your business, it's perfect. So inbox preview, uh, you get five free per month with the plus account. For most people, that should be enough. I have a a litmus and an email and asset account that I use, but so five is should be pretty good for most. And the social data, I have it in my account, so I'm not sure what that means. You can ask before, but it says right here optional paid, but I have it in my account. Maybe they like me or something. I don't know. Um, again, you can actually auto import from other services, from databases. Again, you get the site event tracking. You get the social media tools and integrations, the Facebook sharing, all that. API access for all accounts. The API is pretty awesome. They have detailed step-by-step -step ways to use the API. They give you actual examples. I can show you that in a little bit if you want. It's pretty badass. You can actually, with the Plus account or the Enterprise account, um, customize the URL for your links, which is cool. And you don't need to worry about all that. Again, live chat and email supports included. For the Plus account, you get one one-on-one -on -one training per month. It's, it's awesome. If you get the enterprise account, and my main client that has the enterprise account, they only have a list of like 35,000. It's not that big, but the the detailed one-on-one -on -one training, I just had one today. I had two last week. There's there's no like, oh no, you've already reached your limit. It's whenever you need it, they get, they get on and show you anything you want. You walk through like I set up this complicated automation sequence. I might even show you it for my client, it's super complicated. And basically it's just been in uh, three sessions we've done and he's just walking me step by step. It's pretty badass. So if you have 10,000 or more, I would consider doing the enterprise. So there you have it. So let's go more into the system. So here's the automations. There's, uh, wait, I think I need to, nope, you should be able to see it right now. Um, orgasmic photo, I mean organic photo. Uh, yes, you can import your existing list from MailChimp without having everyone resubscribe. Yes, you can. Not a problem. All right. 
And what's cool about having these detailed one-on-ones with active campaign people is I've gotten a lot of insight into how to best set up these automations. So if you just fly from the seat of your pants and just try and figure out everything on your own, you're probably gonna end up like me when I first started doing this is creating one automation with a gazillion different paths. Like yes, no, this, okay, wait, blah, blah, blah. Let's do a million things and with yes, no, blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, dude, no. I'm telling you, you don't wanna do that. I've seen people go through hell with this. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna set up an automation for one specific scenario. Yes, continue, no move them on to another automation. So it might be seem complex to have multiple automations, but actually it's a lot less thinking and make thing, it makes things a lot less complicated. So that's one tip right there is to have multiple automations. Again, that's my bonus, the ultimate deliverability funnel. It's probably gonna be two weeks, live hangout, step-by-step -step instructions, all that good stuff. All right. So let's, Check out the automations. Again, email response warrior.com forward slash AC. So this is insane right here. Like I was saying before, I'd never ever in 18 plus years seen so much marketing power, so easy to use for such a low price. So, you know, as you know, I'm certified through Mech Labs with online testing and email optimization, landing page optimization, value proposition opt op optimization, all that good stuff. And what they always emphasize is where do you start is the item, the scenario, the objective that has the lowest cost yet has the highest return possible. Okay. So you have to analyze that for yourself, your own company, but it's all here. You can just go insane upfront or still do some insanely profitable actions with the highest amount of possible return. So look at this. So let's start the automation. You can start it if they subscribe. You can start it if they unsubscribe. Um, if they submit a form, if they open or read an email, if they click a link in a specific email, if they visit a certain web page. So if you have a membership site, this is awesome. So if they go to a specific lesson, you can follow up with them automatically. So like I was saying before, rather than having one automation for your entire business, you could have just one automation for one lesson. Maybe it's the most powerful lesson. If they consume that content, they'll get more than what they paid for by investing in your course just by that lesson create one single automation to follow up. Or maybe the automation is if, say, wait seven days. If they visited, follow up and see if they have any feedback. Do they have any questions? If they haven't visited that lesson within seven days, follow up and emphasize, future pace them of all the amazing benefits of viewing that lesson and keep giving them links to to go consume that lesson because if they consume that lesson it doesn't matter if they never consume anything else again they're going to feel they got the value out of the investment in their course does that make sense so superpowers that are normally only available for top tier providers at a low tier price insane an event is recorded. Did they buy X product or did they buy Y product? Mostly I only, I only include share links in my more corporate accounts, but if say for some reason you think it's good, you can actually do things based off their share. You can give them, you can dynamically reward them if they share your email or if they forward your email. It's another thing that's good and bad about active campaign, you can actually track replies and you can do things based on if they reply to your email. And especially for my corporate client, that's insane because you got people that are interested in getting a business or first class, a discounted business, first class ticket. 
And if they're if you're sending them their weekly deals, they're not going to have, they're not going to want a quote all the time. So you get a lot of vacation requests. Uh, I'm not in the office because it's a lot of uh, secretaries that book business of first class tickets for their CEOs. So what Active Campaign actually does is it it records that the, that's what they did and that's the type of reply, but it doesn't forward their messages. To, to you so you don't get inundated with all those vacation replies or just stupid crap it'll actually change their email address they can actually detect if someone replies says hey can you change my email they'll actually do it for you badass um if it's something that they can't detect with their algorithm they'll just forward it on to you which is awesome now here's the problem Right now, at this juncture, they've taken my feedback. If you want the reply feature, not only do they change the reply to email to be, it's going to be a variation of your account name. So mine's Breakthrough Email Marketing. So my, my reply to email, if I use that feature, is uh, Breakthrough Email Marketing dot active hosted blah, blah, blah at ecms.com. That's theirs. Um, but they actually changed the reply to email. No, they actually changed, that's the reply to email. So it goes to them first and then they forward it on to you if it can't detect what it is. But they actually take over the from email. And I was like, that's stupid. What if they have my from email in their contact list or they've whitelisted it? I have all this history on this from domain and now you're taking it away. It's an awesome feature, but I don't know if that's gonna be worth it. For me, for my corporate client, it's awesome. And I do it. And they're like, and I was talking to the guy, I was like, yeah, I was like, I wonder why we change the from email. That doesn't make any sense. We don't need it. We only need to control the reply to email. And you can actually still set your reply to email. So if you activate the feature, they change the reply to email. It goes to them first, they do whatever based on if it's change email a vacation message, or if it's none of the above, then they'll send it to the reply to email that you want. So again, the problem is, is that the, they changed the from email. So for me, Big Jason at emaildominion.com, they changed that as well. So that's an issue, but they agree that there's no reason for them to be changing the from email. Does that make sense? So again, awesome, bad, but even more awesome that they're taking the feedback. All right, tag is added. So if you tag them as a active, if they take an action, if they visit a site, you can tag them. You can tag them based on the product they purchase, how active they are. Um, you can tag them based on the lesson. So again, the API is really de easy to use. So you can actually use their API um, to tag them based on if they visit a certain lesson. And if you're really good, you can actually do it if they actually watch the video. So it's pretty awesome. Um, if for some reason you remove a tag, you can do something. Uh, again, they have lead scoring. Like if they do certain action, a group of actions, you're going to score them at a certain point and then talk to them based on if their scores are really low or if they're really high. If you've never checked out lead scoring, if you never used OAP, then you're going to have to read about it. That'll explain everything. Um, if you sign up through a free for a free account through my link, you should be good. All right, enters the pipeline. That's again, if you're using a CRM deal stages again, CRM more advanced. You can check that out later. Deal status. So let's go. Okay, they subscribe. Cool. So. You can do an automation for every single list you have and just say any list, or you can create specific lists, like for my breakthrough email marketing. Um, and you can segment right away. So if they're added to a list, you could put added into segment. Um, from what I've seen, that's really not necessary. I can see how some people might want to do that, but I'm not using it. And then you can actually specify, um, allow them to only go through this automation once. So for example, say my breakthrough email marketing show. Once they 
sign up for the Breakthrough Email Marketing Show, I can either send them a confirmation from Webinar Jam, just giving them the link and not sending them a welcome email to the Breakthrough Email Marketing Show list. If that's the case, then I only want, want them to go through this one time because they're already on the list. They already got updated with the custom field that says yes for whatever show it is. They're getting the attendance link email from Webinar Jam. But if I was like, no, I want to send them the confirmation link again for Breakthrough Email Marketing List, so you just click Change multiple times. Done. OK. So there you have it. So here's the automation. Again, look at this. Need help? Contact us. Sweet. So there's no one on right now. And again, depending on the time, uh, especially it's later. It's 4.27 PM Pacific. 727 Eastern, so makes sense that no one's on right now. But I've seen late at night that they get on. So it's hit or miss in the evening. But uh, most of the time in the evening, I can still get them. So I can just say, uh, you know, when I'm creating an automation and I want them to do this and they did that, do you think it'd be better if I did this? They'll be like, oh, totally. What you should do is blah, blah, blah. And, you know, just transparency, depending on who you get, you might need might need to do some more exp explanation. You know, they're not a bunch of guys from India or the Philippines who don't speak English. Um, I would say maybe they have one or two uh, English-speaking foreign guys, but I don't. I haven't seen anybody from India or Philippines. And I don't say anything bad about people from India or Philippines. I work with them all the time. I'm just saying that's typically people's objections about customer support is you got someone from India or Philippines that doesn't speak good English, hard to understand, hard to communicate with them, all that. So you don't have to worry about that for the most part. You're welcome, Seamus, man. Thanks for coming. Um, can I recap the offer, any deadline? Uh, there's no deadline. If, as long as you get the paid account through me and I can verify it, uh, I'm good. Just forward your confirmation email or receipt to me jmhonline at gmail.com or bigjason at emaildominion.com. So what you're getting is the ultimate deliverability funnel. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do a walkthrough hangout of setting it up. Uh, you're going to get uh, written step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots. And I'll probably do a follow-up hangout based on questions I get. And so this is a ultimate deliverability funnel that has been praised by two different heads of deliverability for email service providers and my buddy from return path uh, i've used it for some of my big clients with lists in the millions so that's what you get i just need a plus account or higher and again i think the lowest plus account is 49 bucks which is nothing you get all this for 49 bucks depending on the size of your list unlimited sending no brainer talk to you soon man all right so you got this initial thing. What, how do you want it to start? So they just subscribe to Breakthrough Email Marketing. Sweet, All right? This is so bloody simple. Click the plus button. Okay, what do you want to do? They just subscribed. Now, depending if it's stocks, real estate, um, you can send them a text, send them an email. You can notify someone that says, hey, sales rep, this person just requested a first class flight from Vegas to Paris. Call them ASAP. Or you can say, you know what? I want to wait a little bit. I want to wait 20 minutes. I want to wait two hours. I want to wait a day. Then I want to send something, send an email, send a text, or notify somebody. Or you can say if, huh, they subscribe to my Breakthrough Email Marketing Show, which show? So I can do if, ta-da. So this is, this is badass as well. Unfreaking believable. So here's the site event data. So 
Visiting device. What? I can target people if they're on the iPhone. I can send them a special email specifically for iPhone. Yep. Or mobile phone, actually. That's a feature I should suggest. I want to send e one email for iPhone and one for Android. Uh, but that's pretty badass. So if they you can do multiple conditionals as well. So I want to target people that signed up for the Mike Morgan show who are on a mobile device. And then let's see what else. And they have the tag exists. They have the breakthrough email marketing tag of BEM. Okay, cool. Then I want actions so has clicked the link has not clicked the link has opened not opened shared socially has forwarded not forwarded has replied has not replied is in a certain list or not in certain lists so maybe i want to target people that subscribe to my breakthrough email marketing show whether they are email response warrior gold members which is the upsell or just email response warrior standard members so you could do that Um, if they're in, a, in another automation or if they're not in another automation, if they've completed another automation, it's a lot of pretty awesome stuff. Okay, what else? Geography. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm going to send one email based on if they're from, well, I saw Justin Wheeler on the call, so that means I... I mean, if you have someone doing this for you, if you outsource it or you have someone on staff, like I could force my wife to do this if I wanted to, but then she wouldn't be able to cook all those gourmet meals, so I'm not going to do that. But if I did, I could say, aha, I want to target everybody like Justin in Peru. And again, you could say or. Say or. Nope, and. What else? So geography, uh, personal data. So again, I can target everybody if they sign up with the email they use for Facebook. Yes. All right. Member of Facebook. So I want to say something specifically. I want to tell them about my private Facebook group. Again, deals, that's more uh, corporate-based, but check that out. Date and time. Depending on the current day of the week, the current day of the month, what month it is, the year it is, current time. What the hell? I didn't even know they had this. Justin, you were typing something and now it's gone. What the heck? All right, we've been going on for a while, so I'm going to check out some of the people that are naughty and are not joining us on the private Skype group. They're too good for us. BreakthroughEmailMarketing.com forward slash Skype once you have Skype loaded. Join us so I can see your questions in real time. Andy says, uh, question for later, have you tried or tested benchmark? Uh, no, I have not. All right, most people are on, so that's all good. All right, so I think we've covered all the different ways. And again, you can do this on individual emails, individual campaigns. This is I'm just going through automations right now. But as you can see, this is crazy. See, look at all these custom fields I have. I can target. So I am a good product owner. When affiliate promotes me, I grab their affiliate ID and I store it so that if they don't buy, when I follow up, I can give the affiliate credit. I'm a nice guy. So say I have a super affiliate. I was like, ooh, I want to target his leads specifically. I want to talk to him a certain way. I want to remind them about that super affiliates bonus. So let's say 
BJ, Mike, Jimmy. So Mike Morgan, I'm going to send a special email to his people. Awesome. So that's all. That's just a few ways you can do with this automation. So let me just give you one more thing. So I'll do it in if else. If custom field. Active campaign show is yes. OK. So there's two ways to do it. You can say if the active campaign show custom field is yes, or you can say if the active campaign show campaign show is no. So you can talk to people differently because maybe they just signed up for my breakthrough email marketing show list and it wasn't for a specific show. So I'll talk to them one way, but if it's for the active campaign show, don't you think I want to follow up with them about active campaign? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sh if active campaign shows yes, all right, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait one day. And then I am going to send an email. And then I'm going to create the email. I'm going to give it a name. All right. So BEM show, breakthrough marketing show, hyphen active campaign. So let's sign up. Oh, sing up. All right. So you can give it a name. Again, I don't recommend the templates. They're going to make them better. I'll be creating some templates. Myself, once they improve this piece of crap. Uh, let me just, for the more advanced people, just let me tell you because I can change it after this. So, uh, your free active campaign account. Okay, it's got the right front name and from email. All right, so here's the template. Uh, it's more corporate. Who cares? Now, if you want to view the source, you can. Actually, no, you can't. You have to actually review the, the actual template. So once you get an email, you can't really. My bad. So yeah, that's, that's one of the problems with the template is you actually can't go in. You can click on it. You can change the image. You can add a link, and the edit is crap. You cannot all tag or anything. So let's just screw templates for now. Let's change the design. I don't want. Screw that. Let's go back. So I get for freestyling. Carl, yes, you missed a ton, dude. It's an hour and 40 minutes in. All right. So let's do that again. Actually, let's just get out of there and recreate it. Okay, send email. So you can choose past emails for multiple conditions. Uh, BM show active campaign. Go sign up. All right, so you choose the basic template if you want to do use your own HTML, okay? Don't mess with the templates right now. I'll let you know when they change it. I remember that. That's nice. Okay, Shazam. So now I can go to Dreamweaver, copy and paste, all that good stuff. Let me – I'll actually do that. I just think I might. 
There you go. Code. All right. And here's another cool thing about Active Campaign. They don't screw your code as much as most people. Um, there's a few things that they move to the head section, but it's not a deal breaker. But a lot of people are just retarded and they munge your code all the time. All right. So again, if you want to do conditionals, so let's say let's do a conditional for first name. Insert conditional. Well, how did I get the first name in the first place? I just clicked personal message. And then you just click first name or email address, full name, last name, blah, blah, blah. You can do custom fields. You can do all their social accounts. And then here's yada, yada, send to a friend. You can put in the date. You can put a view on the web, which I think is worthless because I test this thing and hardly anybody, hardly anybody clicks it, even my corporate accounts. Um, you can insert all kinds of share links. You can insert SurveyMonkey or Dropbox. They have tons of apps, too. They integrate with practically everything that was ever thought of in internet marketing. But anyways, that's the just insert the value of a field. But if we want to get jiggy with it, say you've been deceived sometimes and your opt-in form doesn't have a first name field, but it does have a first name field in others, you could say insert conditional content. So email address, you could say contains Gmail. So you could target people that are using Gmail. That's pretty awesome. But right now I want to do first name. So, so first name. So you could do this two ways. You could say, and again, so let's pretend I have no idea how to do this. Like, oh, I wanna, I wanna put in their first name if they I have the first name or and I want to say something else if I don't have the first name oh, it's, oh. well one you could just look at the documentation it's all there or you could just click the chat button again depending on the time of the night they might not be available but you can still send them an email and the follow-up um, but most of the time during the evening they're there so you just ask them so I'm gonna say uh, does not equal is not nothing all right Shazam. So, sup, comma, if the first name is not there, I'm going to say, sup, email ninja. Go ninja, go ninja, go. Sorry. Having a vanilla ice flash, flashback. All right. Um, if I do have the first name, I'm just going to say first name. So you're like, well, what if I can't remember the token? Okay, let's use the personalized message button. Personalized first name. Boom. And there you go. Now, this is just personal for me. Sometimes it just looks better. It keeps me at ease that everything is on one line. This works. The only thing you have to worry about if you start doing that is getting confused about you know the else or the else if because you don't want to erase any of those percent signs. And this is another feature I recommended to them that they're taking under consideration is if you do screw up the conditionals that they'll tell you. So how it is right now, how do you know that if you screwed, up, screwed it up, you can't send a test message. That's how you know. Um, Justin, I've promoted affiliate products already multiple times. I've been blatant about it, and there's no problem. They just hate, you know, spammers and affiliate-focused people. As long as you're providing value and you're just not straight, hey, buy this, then... You should be good. But if you want to pitch me your scenario, and I'll give you some feedback on whether you should or not. 
Um, I was concerned myself, do I want to put forth the effort importing all my existing lists or some of them or my major lists, do I, setting up the custom fields, the automations, and then having to screw it all? I took it for a test drive. I said, hell yeah, it's worth it. And uh, it's been over a month and all good. All right, so that's inserting a conditional. And again, let's just remember, you always want to hit shift enter, never just hit enter. You don't want, you don't like key tags, break tags. This is what I mean. See, I'll get rid of that later, but you can see between all my sentences, for the most part, is break tags. That's preferred. So if you wanted to get crazy, crazy er, again, you got all these custom fields. So you can target um, if they've been on a certain show, if they've shown a certain interest, if they've actually bought or even just clicked on a certain affiliate product. Um, you can target Facebook people. You can target gender. See, all the people that uh, signed up from Ben Settle's recommendation, I can target Ben Settle people. So like, what, what do you mean? How could you target them in this email versus everybody else? So event, Ben Settle people. So these are Ben Settle people that purchased email response warrior through his affiliate link. Um, I can say contains or equals or does not equal i'm going to say equal yes or i could say it does not equal yes it's up to you i could put in another condition but all i care is if they're ben settles people all right check this out remember when ben settle said my Email response warrior course was the bomb. He told you to buy it for a good reason. Blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, say whatever. That's pretty kick-ass. The other thing you could do is you could just say, if you're a stud and you know who's been referred by an affiliate, you could just say, you know, if they have the tag referred by affiliate, say something. If they haven't been referred to by an affiliate, then say another. So a lot of different ways you can do this. Extremely powerful. Again, there's examples of me changing things based on if they've already re already registered for this show uh, or if they haven't. So pretty badass. So this is the dashboard. Everything's nice and neat. Gives you all the trends, top contacts, pipelines, and deal tasks if you're into the CRM stuff. If you got a sales staff, let's look at the apps. Again, if you have any questions, break3emailmarketing.com forward slash Skype if you have Skype loaded. All right, so Fluid Surveys, Facebook, Zip. Zapier, WordPress, Unbounce, Gravity Forum, Salesforce, Capsule CRM, Google Analytics, 
pipe drive twitter paypal nimble woocommerce woofu survey monkey shopify sugar crm my sequel one page crm awesome that's my favorite apps just to check out but you can actually see by category so you can say forms so this is all types of forms integration that they have and then here's the site event tracking site and event tracking so for site tracking so if you just want to do stuff based on what page they visited all you do is copy and paste this so they have a place for email so if they click on a link from your email you don't need to provide the email address here they'll know they'll automatically associate that page visit from a person each individual that clicks on a link from your emails um, otherwise you could through PHP or through a token of wish list insert that there so that's the super super simple part of knowing every single page they've been to whether it's your sales funnel or your membership site and then here is a little more that's JavaScript this is a little more complicated PHP but you can convert it to JavaScript this is the event tracking and again they have complete examples so there's basically a spot to put the email again you don't need to put the email in there if they've clicked on a link in your email um, basically you're just going to describe the event so I have my list of events here you add, just add an event so I already have BM show registers so let's say I want to say ERW purchase So I would just event put in ERW underscore purchase. Um, event data is just a description. So if you want to describe that or differentiate that. So for event, I could say ERW purchase. For event data, I could put affiliate or no affiliate. So pretty cool. Now, let me just quickly go over the API. So click on API, and everything that integrates with Active Campaign out of the box, they'll ask you for the API URL, the API key. It's always the same. It's right here, easy peasy. And they also have web hooks, which is a cousin of API. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Your programmer might want to know. But uh, you click on here. And again, I'm using the API myself for several things. Uh, contact. So you can actually subscribe people. So if you do Webinar Jam or any piece of crap software that doesn't give you flexibility with the landing pages, say like lead pages, sometimes click funnels or whatever, and you're like, wow, I really like the look of this, but it's so it's such a pain in the ass to change. So I want to rip out all the code and use it on my site and you can go through the API. So it describes each option. So it gives each variable the description and it gives you all the different options you can use. And then it gives you a complete PHP example, again, with more description. So it's probably the most documented, well-documented API I've seen in a long time. And they actually take comments on it so you can ask questions and they answer it. So it's pretty badass. So they give you a huge list of all the things you can do. You can add a contact. You can delete a contact if you want a custom unsubscription form. You can actually change and add tags and all that cool stuff. See contact tag add and they give you examples. So if you, again, if you have a membership site, you can be tagging people based on which lessons they view, which actions they take. Pretty awesome stuff. Oh, here's the pricing. So my bonus of the ultimate deliverability funnel is not really for the $9 a month people. Um, you're probably not ready for it. So plus or higher, it gets my bonus 
if you get your account through emailresponsewarrior.com forward slash AC. So that's a $49 per month. You can customize it. And then, again, the enterprise month, enterprise account is on $149. If you have any type of list, um, you want to get that. So it depends on the number of people you have on your list. So this is a good time to possibly clean your list so you don't waste a lot of money. So do a re reactivation campaign and clean it out. So you, again, you're getting a ton. You're getting a dedicated rep and a ton of features for that. And they have a yearly option. And again, you can go to emailresponsewarrior.com forward slash AC and check out all the differences. So I've already basically explained all of this, all the amazing data that it gives you, all the amazing integrations, all the behavioral based emails you can do based on what they do, actions they take, split testing, dynamic content based on certain things, who they are, what they've done. It gives you other the geo tracking is pretty awesome because it does it just doesn't tell you they live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'll actually track them if they travel a lot. So say if you wanted to mention, you know, how's the weather in, uh, you know, Spain. What if they live in the UK and you want to target UK people? Great. But what if you're just casually saying, you know, um, I don't know about you, but it, it's snowing like crazy here in Las Vegas, which is not true. But, um, you know, how's the weather in blank so rather than saying uk when there's traveling in spain it'll actually know that they're in spain and it'll say spain that's pretty awesome so it tracks them it, you know where they live and they know you know where they travel all behind the scenes so there you go let me uh go back All right, um, Carl wants to know what the bonus is again. It's my ultimate deliverability email funnel. Um, you get the exact emails I use for myself and for clients. You get a live hangout, a private one, walkthrough, plus probably a bonus one based on additional questions. That's going to be in a couple weeks. A detailed step-by-step -step, uh, manual to set it up as well. So this is the funnel that's been raved about by two different heads of deliverability for ESPs, major ESPs, and my buddy from Return Path. Um, I think it's a great strategy. I've actually used this for myself and my big clients and little clients. It's going to get you better deliverability, better relationship. And the cool thing with Active Campaign, it's going to be all automated. So you just need a plus account or a hire from emailresponsewarrior.com forward slash AC. Just forward your receipt or confirmation email to me at jmhonline at gmail.com or bigjason at emaildominion.com. Any further questions about Active Campaign or any email service provider for that matter? If you have any questions, which is the best for this or that? If you've gotten a lot of value out of today, I'd appreciate it if you give me a shout out on Facebook, Google Plus, LinkedIn, whatever, and feel free to tag me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash big marketing. And if you're watching the replay, feel free to leave your comments and questions below. Wow, this is targeted as a simple 45 minute uh, show today that went two hours and still got a ton of people uh, on. So again, to review,
Active Campaign is going to help you make more money from your list by providing you and your business the most affordable yet powerful email marketing solution to help put you in the best possible position to get the right message to the right person at the right time, in my opinion, based on over 18 plus years of using, you know, umpteen, top tier, mid tier, and low tier providers. I'm always on the hunt for, you know, the latest and greatest. And Powerful features and easy use. I have not found to date anything better than AC. So out of the box, if you don't have a lot of time to customize and set up things, still out of the box, AC. And then once you get uh, either you outsource to train someone or you know take a week and set things up, you're just going to be blown away. All right, guys, I appreciate it. This was a special show on Tuesday because, you know, Thursday is turkey day and little bunny's going to be cooking up a feast. So I'll be eating all day, literally. That's not a joke. All right, I'm back. And I'm out of here because I'm actually getting hungry right now. So I'm going to eat. Um, appreciate it guys again email response warrior.com forward slash AC my ultimate deliverability bonus exact emails I use for myself and my clients live hangout walkthrough one Possibly two detailed step by step instructions, email response warrior.com forward slash AC. And I will see you next time. Happy Thanksgiving if I don't talk to you uh, till then. And uh, look forward to my next show, which is going to be with Million Dollar Mike Morgan, one of the top copywriters for Agora. Uh, he He's written several controls for them. If you don't know Agora, they're like one of the most storied and famous direct marketing companies in the world. Um, the best of the best write copy for them. And we're going to be talking about how to uh, have your readers, how to turn your, get your readers into a buying frenzy, even if you suck at writing copy. So he's going to be covering how he's written million dollar copy for over 17 years and now with Agora. So he's going to be giving a lot of insights away. So stay tuned, be on the lookout, and I will talk to you next time. Hey, this is Big Jason. Thank you so much for listening to the Breakthrough Email Marketing Show. For more free information based on over 20 years of proven results and not guesswork, go to BreakthroughEmailMarketing.com, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.